all my life, actually, when I look at my life, I say all my life I have lived between two worlds. Uh, at the age of 15, my father, uh, Taragi means progress. And he was a man who believed in America, in the future, in science, and in progress, although he was born in the holy city of Rome, and he had the education to become an ayatollah. But he threw away, he said, his turban, and he decided to come to Tehran and become a lawyer, which he became, and founded two magazines, you know. So always to me and my brother, he said, uh, look, I came f when I came to Tehran, I didn't have a penny. Now I have an empire. But don't come to me. I will not give you a penny. You have to make yourself. And we said, we don't want to make ourselves. So you, you, <laughs> you have enough. You can give us some. And he said, no, no, no. Forget about it. You will go to America. There is land of progress. And you make your own life. And what I missed. Being away f from Iran was the language. The language is, your s language is the soul. You know, Heidegger says that language is the house of being. Language is really the, even Lacan, the, the famous French psychiatrist, says that language is your psyche, your soul. And when you are not in the ocean of your own language, even if you speak it fluently, something is missing. Somehow something inside, you're not completely yourself. But when I go to Iran, the minute I put my, the uh, minute I am in the airport, and I hear these words and, you know, sounds, familiar sounds of centuries, uh, you know, that I know, that my soul knows, it, you know, even when I hear somebody grumble, or Iranian, you know, grumble a lot, or uh, a spear, a spear, or how would you say spear in, in, in English? <laughs> breathing, it's not breathing. Oh, Mikishan, huh? My dear translator. <laughs> <laughs> you're sighing, you're breathing, you're exhaling, you're inhaling. No, 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 inhaling. Ah, Mikishan, you're your sigh. But Iranian sigh, Persian sigh is a different sigh. It's not the <laughs> sigh. Oh, <then> French sigh. <laughs> Absolutely. It's not your sigh. It's not a European sigh. European sigh is logical, you know, <laughs> because if, if an American sighs because he has a problem, he's unhappy, it, there's a meaning for his sigh. But the Iranian sigh is a sigh of centuries. Iran right now is a country of contradiction, especially after the revolution. In one of my stories, uh, I have written, of course, I've written about it. And it's true that uh, for my son, I wanted to buy a gift, and I didn't know what. And in Isfahan, behind a, in the window, I saw an ax. You know. A dervish, the dervish, you know, put it on their shoulder. And I thought it's something decorative that when I gave it to him, he said, what do you want this for? <laughs> and what is this? And I said, this is, anyway, it can be, you know, it's a decoration for your room. But when I put it in my suitcase, and then when I looked in my suitcase, passed by the x-ray, they say, oh, oh, let a katale. A weapon, uh, something to kill, a weapon. Weapon? Yeah. So they, they must come out, you know, take it out, take it out. How could I kill? How? But this to kill the captain, and they had a feeling that I could kill the captain and take hostages and take the airplane to Africa. But what is this cannot even cut a table or anything. So, anyway. They took it out, and they looked, and all the people were looking. And I was going, my god, what do they think of me, a terrorist? And so they said, no, this is something precious. It's a, a cultural 
heritage, belonging. Oh, but wait, Mr. Tutti. Tutti has, he must come and say. And well, he really was, his name was Tutti. <laughs> so Tutti means a perroquet, you know. Parrot. Oh. oh, French parrot. parrots. And then they called Mr. Tutti, Mr. Tutti, and people were just making fun and, you know, saying, Tutti, Tutti. <laughs> so Mr. Tutti came. Very small, nice man with glasses, and he looks and he looks up and down. He said, "Its head is modern, but its tail is ancient." <laughs> I said, "How ancient?" He said, "Maybe Sasanian period, Achaemenian period." And I said, no, I don't want this. It's yours. You can have it. I don't want this thing. So he said, no, you, you, we will keep it for you, and we will examine it. I said, I'll put it in the museum if, if it is that old. You know. But then now, I'll tell you, this gave me an idea for the story right away. This is us, this act. Our head and our tail don't match, <laughs> really. Our head is somehow maybe modern, but our tail <coughs> is ancient. And this is a big problem, problem of identity. Surely it was by literature, through the words and literature, that I saved myself. Writing, you know, I made as if I was in the bottom of a well, and with words and everything, I really made a rope, and I pulled myself up. And this was such a therapeutic effect, effect on me, that little by little, I came up and up and up till I saw really out, like Joseph coming out of uh, the well. And when I came out, I was really a new person with full of energy. And first thing I wanted to do is to hug my children and sit and write. And so this is what I wrote my memories, childhood memories, which is called Khateraha'i Parakande, the scattered memories, and then second volume of it, two words. So when I published this, this became a hit in Iran.